Okay, so we will continue with the discussion on the earth system. As you may recall, we are looking at the carbon cycle, right. So, we started with the, in the earth system, the components, the oceans, cryosphere, terrestrial biosphere, the earth's crust and climate, we completed that and we looked at the hydrological cycle. I would not say in fair detail, but at least more than just an introduction. Now, we are looking at carbon cycle and the last part will be the oxygen in the earth system. So, in today's class, we will complete the carbon cycle as well as the oxygen in the earth system with which we will complete this chapter 2 that is the earth system and so the next class we will move on to atmospheric thermodynamics, okay, where we will get back to chalk and talk, all right. Okay, carbon in the earth crust, uh, you have got carbon both from inorganic and or organic sources. So, the inorganic and organic carbon reservoir, they are very, very large, okay. Uh, I already gave you an estimate. What is the estimate in one of the previous tables? Can you say so many kilograms per meter square or something? Huh? It is very huge, right? So, for example, the organic carbon in sedimentary rocks is 20,000 kilograms per meter cube, right? And then you all also have uh, uh, inorganic carbon in the sedimentary rocks, which is like 80,000 kilograms per meter square. So, there is a lot of carbon, okay. So, and the, look at the residence time. The residence time is basically organic carbon is 2 into 10 to the power of 8 years and the inorganic carbon is about 10 to the power of 8 years. So, the, it is, uh, the processes are very slow, the processes are very slow. So, the residence time is at the order of millions of years, it is not, in, not even 10 to the 10 to the 6, it is 10 to the 8, hundreds of millions of years. So, what are the sources of this organic carbon and the inorganic carbon? Organic carbon, natural gas, oil, coal and sedimentary rocks, okay. As far as the inorganic carbon is concerned, basically you have limestone or calcium carbonate which is a product of the marine uh, biosphere, okay. Weathering is an ac action or activity which exposes organic carbon in sedimentary rocks to the atmosphere, allowing it to be oxidized, okay, thereby it completes the loop. So, this we have already seen to some extent in the earlier class. So, this is called the long term inorganic carbon cycle, calcium carbonate plus hydrocarbon carbonic acid and then silicon dioxide, all these reactions we saw in the last class, okay. So, this uh, weathering and organic carbon in the sedimentary rocks, oxidation and this is basically a part of the long term inorganic carbon cycle. The problem now is currently the burning of fossil fuels returns as much carbon to the atmosphere in a single year as weathering would return in thousands of years. That is why there is a rapid increase of carbon dioxide as confirmed by the Mauna Loa experiments in the late 50s, right. So, on time scales of tens to hundreds of millions of years, plate tectonics and volcanism also play a role in renewing the atmospheric carbon dioxide because atmospheric carbon dioxide can, uh, carbon dioxide can just come from below the earth's mantle and through these volcanic eruptions can be directly uh, sent out into the atmosphere. So, there are several ways where this carbon dioxide or carbon reaches the atmosphere one is through the burning of the fossil fuels and long term occasionally it can be through the volcanic eruptions, this can also be through the weathering and okay, right then it comes to the ocean and this thing and so on, all right, okay. So, if you want you can take it down anyway I will give this presentation, uh, if you take it down you can understand it, understand this better. This is called the carbonate silicate cycle, okay. Uh, the terminology is S means sedimentation, M means metamorphosis or change and uh, W is the weathering, okay. So, the three uh, elements involved are the carbon, calcium and silicon. So, it is also called the carbonate silicate cycle. So, this is basically from uh, a brief survey of atmosphere by uh, Professor Wallace and Professor Hobbes. So, this is a very famous book, the Wallace, Wallace and Hobbes, okay. Let us look at this uh, in a little more detail. Let us look at the carbon. So, you can look at the carbon in the atmosphere, carbon in the oceans, and carbon in the limestone. So, from the atmosphere you can have uh, the carbon getting into the ocean, we have we saw the route through which this happens and then from the oceans there can be a sedimentation and then this can go to the bottom earth crust or mantle where limestone is formed, okay. This is a way of drawing the atmospheric carbon dioxide and keeping it as a reserve in the form of limestone which can mitigate 
increases in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere to a certain extent. Okay, but uncontrolled release of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere is very difficult because this process is slow or fast. Slow. There is a natural pace associated with this process. You start pumping more, you pump, you burn more fuel and release carbon dioxide all of a sudden for something which is used in millions of years, in in tens of years, you start releasing so much carbon dioxide it cannot handle. So the atmospheric carbon dioxide will increase. Is it okay? So atmosphere, aeromark, ocean sedimentation limestone from limestone weathering can take place weathering can take place because of the action of ocean waves and this thing and all that and then again it can be so you can so recycle it back to the atmosphere which is the left side of this or you can also have metamorphosis and then which can recycle it back to the atmosphere next let's next go to the calcium cycle calcium we say we saw that ca2 plus ions are available so the ca2 plus ions can combine with carbon dioxide ca carbonic acid and through sedimentation it will form limestone right it will form limestone okay and this ca2 plus is coming from no it can it can come from weathering of calcium carbonate the reverse reaction that is one and the skeletons and the skeletons and shells calcium okay it comes from calcium silicate also so there are various sources of calcium so calcium to uh, 2 plus will react with high, uh, carbonic acid which we have already seen in the earlier class. So this can form limestone. This limestone can again change into metamorphic rocks and this metamorphic rocks can undergo weathering and the reverse reaction will take place which will again release ca calcium ions into the into the cycle. So this ocean, so this, this cycle keeps going this is called the calcium cycle. So this metamorphic rocks there is one more activity where you have got calcium carbonate plus silicon dioxide results in calcium silicate plus uh, CO2 plus H2O, CO2, we combined all these reactions and we wrote up some equations in the last class, chemical reactions, right. So you can have a silicon, silicon also enters the picture. So from, from quads, what is quads? Chemical, chemical form, calcium, quads, silicon dioxide, quads is silicon dioxide. So the silicon dioxide can metamorphose, metamorphosis can take place in metamorphic rocks and then some weathering you can also take place then it can again form quads and all this. So this is basically called the long term inorganic carbon cycle, okay. The long term inorganic carbon cycle also referred to as the carbonate silicate cycle, is it okay, fine. Now let us look at this in detail. So inside the now we are looking at the carbon cycle in the earth's crust right. So the mantle the temperatures are very high what is the range of temperatures in the mantle 900 to 4000 degrees centigrade plus okay it is of order of a few thousand degrees centigrade high temperatures are there in, are present in the mantle. So it leads to what is called the mantle reaction please take down this mantle reaction so calcium carbonate. plus plus C O2. What is the big deal? What is the big deal with this? It does not store up. It actually releases, okay. Yeah, it stores what you are saying is partially correct. It is making the carbon dioxide. How is it released? Wow. So, so correct. What he is saying is it stores up the CO2, but what is the vent for it? Volcanic eruption, okay. Release of CO2 through so immediately the uh, proponents of people who are against this climate change uh, theory and all that will say no, no, anyway through volcanic eruptions carbon dioxide is being released. How can you say that uh, fossil fuels are responsible for all this? People have done calculations and have shown volcanic eruptions are not to, uh, occurring every Monday or Tuesday, right? 
right? But every minute, every second, there are some, uh, so many jets. Now, how many jets are flying over the globe? How many long distance jets are flying? In how many jets are flying in India? How many are taking off from Bombay airport, Chennai airport? Carbon dioxide is continuously increasing, all right? Because of this uh, burning of the fossil fuel, okay? So, this is basically a very important uh, this thing. So, calcium carbonate plus limestone plus SiO2 gives calcium silicate. This CO2, the production of CO2, storing it up of CO2 within the mantle and then whenever there is a volcanic eruption, large quantity of CO2 is released. So, there is a possibility that carbon can be transferred. Carbon from deep inside the mantle can be transferred directly to the atmosphere. God has given some route for that also. It is not forbidden. There is an uh, ocean, then there is an uh, It has to cross the ocean, right? But there is a direct route, okay? That is through volcanic eruption. Please remember this, okay? However, high temperatures are required for this reaction to take place. Which reaction? Calcium carbonate plus silicon dioxide results in calcium silicate. How many of you are civil engineers here? Calcium silicate has other uses. We use it in engineering. Where is it used? Cement. So, calcium silicate, but this is very difficult. This is a very bad way of trying to get some, where you have to go deep into the ocean and might as well make cement in the land, right? So, calcium silicate has lot of uses in civil, in engineering also, right? So, this reaction requires high temperature. Such high temperatures prevail in the mantle. All right. So the last portion in this chapter is oxygen in the earth system. Okay. Do we have internet on this laptop? No. Okay. Okay. So the last part is oxygen in the earth system. The earth is very unique. It's a very, the earth is a very habitable planet, largely because of the presence of oxygen and also the presence of water, okay. So, 72 percent is water and, and also because of the presence of oxygen. There is also ozone layer, ozone layer, we already discussed about this ozone layer and all this in one of the earlier classes and what happens if this ozone layer is, uh, there is a hole in the ozone layer and all that. Actually, many of you will be surprised to know that the atmospheric oxygen accounts for only a very small amount of the free oxygen available in the earth system. Many of you do cannot believe that there is lot of oxygen stored up deep inside in various other forms. Okay, see the atmospheric oxygen is only a fraction of the total free oxygen in the earth system and uh, also if you look at the evolution of the earth, there was not this much amount of oxygen was not present originally in the earth. So, there is an oxidation which, has, which, which is taking place, which has resulted in the availability of more oxygen to support more life, right? So, actually originally, to, if you look at Big Bang theory and all this and all those uh, things, in the evolution of uh, oxygen, in the evolution of the earth, you can see that initially it was largely devoid of oxygen, okay? So, oxygen reservoir, oxygen concentration has built up over so many, uh, over so much of time. Now, we will see from where this oxygen has come and so on. We will work out some problems so that there is more clarity on this. Much larger quantities of free oxygen are present in the form of oxidized minerals, largely Fe2, O3, Fe3, O4 and so on, okay, oxides of iron. So, much larger quantities of free oxygen are present in the form of oxidized minerals in the sedimentary rocks. Where are these sedimentary rocks? Uh, in the sedimentary rocks as well as in the earth's crust and in the mantle. In the earth's crust in the mantle as well as sedimentary rocks on the earth, you get lot of this uh, oxygen present in the form of oxidized minerals, okay. That means, oxygen is hiding into the, hiding in all these minerals, but for their current level of oxidation, they must some, some lower form of this oxide must have oxidized in the presence of oxygen to, are you getting the point? Fe2O3 plus O2, balance that if it results in Fe3O4 and there is abundance of Fe3O4 
you, actually we say that oxygen is present in that Fe3O4. If you are able to get, if you do this redox reaction, if you are able to look at the reaction in the opposite direction, then it will lead to, so from Fe3O4 it can go back to Fe2O3 and we can get back the oxygen. So we will have to see whether, so this is one way of getting oxygen in the uh, earth system. What is the traditional, uh, what is the theory or your geography teacher, what has she taught you? Photosynthesis, okay. So the geography teacher, is, she, she or she is not wrong. We are all, we always believe that photosynthesis is the source for, source of or source of, right. It is a, uh, it is a source of, it is a source of oxygen, correct. But it is not fully correct, okay. Because if you look at the current oxidation level of the earth, I will prove before the end of the class, we will prove through problems that photosynthesis is insufficient to explain for the, to explain or account for, so the current oxidation of the earth. So we have to see some other mechanism which has resulted in this oxygen, okay. Please keep this in mind. Geological evidence suggests that oxygen was only a trace element, so geologists have confirmed, okay, using various analysis models and um, uh, uh, marrying mathematical models with measurements and all this and then uh, uh, tracing it back, okay. Back, if you go back in time, so geological evidence confirms that oxygen was only a trace element in the uh, earth's early history. Iron, the iron which is present in sedimentary rock formations that date back, you can do uh, dating, right, you can do dating and find out what is the age. Suppose uh, those uh, sedimentary rocks which are more than 2.2 billion years. It is seen that they are almost exclusively having Fe2, FeO, which is ferrous oxide, is it? Some, there are so many, right? Okay, it is a lower form of FeO and not in its fully oxidized Fe2O3 form. Okay. Now, with that in mind, let us look at the sources of free oxygen. The sources of free oxygen are basically photosynthesis. That photosynthesis reaction we all always we already looked at, right? So there is an uptake of carbon dioxide, right? there is an uptake of carbon dioxide, water and then radiation is absorbed in 0.43 micrometer and 0.66 micrometer which are essentially blue and orange light, okay, energy is going in. So it is not taking, the, the plants are taking uh, uh, food in the form of energy, okay, the E is equal to H nu is there. With that E is equal to H nu, they make that, uh, what is that, H2CO, the food, the glucose, right. Now let us look, so the sources of free oxygen are photosynthesis and redox reaction in the earth's mantle. Now you have to copy down this equation. The ferrous oxide plus H2O results in Fe2O3 plus H2. Let us write this. FeO It is not getting balanced, yeah. 2O plus 1O3, okay. 2FE, FE, H2, H2. So it is all right. That is balanced. So this water is actually steam. This is ferric oxide, is it? Is it okay? Oh. There is some FE3O4 also, is it? Uh, okay. So, iron is so much of trouble. Okay. And this release of H2 is by volcanism or metamorphism. Volcanism is directly it can send H2 into the atmosphere or this H2 can combine with SiO2, CaSiO3, all those reactions which you have already seen. And so, this is the redox reaction which is taking place in the earth's, earth's crust. So the current level of oxidation, so the thesis is, the hypothesis is, the current level of oxidation in the earth is explained only by the, by the above redox, redox reaction. In the absence of this redox reaction, if this redox reaction were not to take place, were not present, then you would have, you would have conjectured or you would have asserted or you, you would have averred that photosynthesis is responsible photosynthesis is responsible and it can fully account for the uh, oxygen 
oxidation of the current level of the, the current oxidation level of the earth system. Okay. Let us demonstrate, demonstrate this. We will uh, solve three problems in today's class. At the end of the three problems, we will prove that the redox reaction is responsible for this. That brings us to the end of this chapter and uh, we are all set to start our new chapter on thermodynamics from tomorrow. Uh, does this mean that the atmospheric oxygen is uh, to photosynthesis? No, no, this can also be released, no? Uh, okay. So, yes, please take down this table. The mass of O2 required to raise the oxidation of the earth. So, this is a table where there are 5 entries, right? And column 1 gives the reservoir and co column 2 gives the mass in kilograms per meter squared. Please take down this table because I, we are going to work out some problems based on this and based on the table which I pre, which you have taken down in an earlier class. Atmospheric oxygen 2.353 kilogram per meter square. Crust Fe3 plus greater than 100. Crust CO3. 100, crust others greater than 100, please note the difference between crust and mantle, right, mantle is deep inside and mantle Fe3 plus is greater than 100. Okay. It is all in kilogram per meter square, these are all some estimates based on some scientific reasoning, but some arguments and some measurements and matching of the models and the measurements. Okay. It could be 2.351 or 3.54, I mean the point is it is around 2 point something, it is not 23 point or 0.23. All done? Okay. Shall we proceed? Problem number 11, problem number 11, please take this problem down. Reconcile the mass of oxygen in the atmosphere in the preceding table. Reconcile. Reconcile the mass of oxygen in the atmosphere in the preceding table with the volume concentration given in a table earlier. So, quiz questions will also be like this. So, I do not have the table. If you say I have no answer to that. So, open notes exam. So, you need to have all the tables, whatever. Okay. Copy down. Okay. Reconcile the mass of oxygen in the atmosphere in the preceding table with the volume concentration given in a table earlier. Okay. Now, let us go to a please go to the earlier table. What is the volume concentration of O2? Twenty point. Okay. This is from an earlier table, right? What will be the mass concentration? Mm -hmm. Step, step, step. Twenty point nine into thirty two by molecular weight of air. Wait, wait, wait. Molecular weight of air. What is the molecular weight of air? Twenty. Shall we say already calculated? 
Ah, okay. Okay. Twenty point nine. Yeah, please tell me how much is this? Twenty three point. What is the mass of the air itself? Five point one one ten to the power of eighteen, but that came from some mass density, no? One point zero zero four in ten to the power of four. Correct? We calculated this value. what is the problem reconcile therefore mass of oxygen in the atmosphere correct <coughs> so you have to see 1.004 into 10 to the power of 4 out of that 23 point some whatever percentage what is this 23.1 percent is oxygen therefore 0.23 into 1.004 will be oxygen right okay therefore mass of oxygen It must be close to the value given in the table, otherwise we are in trouble. I hope to get it. What is it? 2 point? What is it given in the table? Ah, that is okay. 2 point? <laughs> 2 point? Ah. 3 to something. Into 10 to the power of? We always say kilogram per meter square. We do not say kilogram per meter cube area. All right. So, it says 2.35. So, we can say within limits it is reconciled. So, the reconcile is a term used in accountancy, right? You all debit, you all credit, they, if they are not matching, that means you are not reconciled. That becomes an accountant's headache. Huh? So, now we will say, we will say reconciled. That means it is agreeing with the what is reconciled? The entry in this table and the entry in the previous table are reconciled. They are not contradicting each other. This table, so it will be into 10 to the power of minus 3. That is mass into 10 to the power of minus 3 kilogram per meter square is 2.35. Okay, just please make the change, I am not able to. So, mass into 10 to the power of minus 3. You can call it as gram per meter square. Huh? No, or it will lead to more trouble. Okay, so mass into, <laughs> mass into 10 to the power of minus 3 kilogram per meter square is 2.35. Is it okay? Okay, done. Problem number 12. Please take down the problem. Using the data provided in the previous table. Using the data provided in the previous table, estimate the mass of oxygen required. Using the data provided in the previous table, estimate the mass of oxygen required to form the carbonate deposits in the earth's crust. What is the total amount of carbonate deposit? 80,000 kilogram per meter square, correct, in the previous table. <coughs> 
80,000 kilogram per meter square, correct? That is the last entry. That is, that is okay. That is correct. Correct, correct, correct. What I am saying is correct. So, if we, if that is 80,000, what is that? Correct. Inorganic carbon in sedimentary rock, okay. Inorganic carbon in sedimentary rock is 80,000 kilogram per meter square. That is the data given to you. How much of oxygen is required for getting this value of 80,000 kilogram per meter square? Okay, that is a question. Now you have to write some equations and. Next question will be how much of oxygen is released by photosynthesis? How will you work it out? How will you work it out? That is problem 13. How much oxygen is released for during photosynthesis? Then some plants are there, then they will decay, they die, and all that. And finally, what is the proxy for that? The photosynthesis activity, the final proxy of all this is the organic carbon, which is 20,000. Finally, everything is dead and going now. That organic carbon is 20,000 kilogram per meter square. That 20,000 kilogram per meter square, if you find out the amount of oxygen which has been used, that is a proxy for the amount which was released during photosynthesis. Now, you will not be able to reconcile that. That means the photosynthesis cannot fully explain what is there in the inorganic. So, therefore, that FeO plus uh, whatever H2O gives it Fe2O3, that H2, that redox reaction, which is basically coming because of steam is acting with the, all that, and that is responsible for fully accounting for the current oxidation. That is what we are trying to drive at. So, systematically solve problem 12 and problem 13. Okay. So, problem 12 cannot be done straight away. So, you have to write some, get back to your chemistry. Okay, so Salt? Yeah, huh? Mm -hmm. I'm getting more. Let us write the. So I think you are all getting stuck with the. So CO2. balanced correct okay so this carbon dioxide plus calcium 2 ions are reacting with the uh, carbonic acid right and it results in calcium carbonate plus this thing then huh? no no wait
Now, add 1 and 2. What do you get? O2 minus this CaCO3 is a sedimentary rocks right we are say, we said that we have said only sedimentary rocks right carbonate deposits we are not uh, but the concentration of calcium carbonate is so high compared to other things that is predominant that is why that is a leading order term other things are not you can do an analysis and your geochemist and geo, geochemist can give you the data on that okay now, what is happening? One free oxygen atom is combining with one, leave the calcium, okay. One free oxygen atom is combining with one carbon atom and it becomes calcium carbonate okay the carbon in this is about 80000 kilogram per meter square therefore the amount of oxygen required will be 80000 into 16 by 12 is the funda clear no no that we are talk, we are going to the root what is the carbon in that carbon that is 80,000 kilogram per meter square, okay. So, I hope this logic is clear. So, I will write it clearly. One free oxygen So, one free oxygen atom pairs with a carbon atom in CO2 and resides in the earth's crust as carbonate. So, this is the funda. Hence, Is it hundred thousand? Okay, approximately. Okay. Everybody through with this? Okay. 
I just wrote some re, uh, reactions and final with simple this thing is this is 16 do not worry about 2 minus is only the charge it is a single atom this is 16 this is 12. So, this somehow it is 80,000 80,000 when it combines it will be 16 divided by 12. So, the oxygen required is 100,000 let us go to problem it is fine some people are still copying. Problem 13, using the data provided in the previous table, using the data provided in the previous table, estimate the oxygen, using the data provided in the previous table, estimate the oxygen liberated by photosynthesis, using the data provided in the previous table estimate the oxygen liberated by photosynthesis over the lifetime of the earth. So, look at the organic carbon in the sedimentary rocks is 20,000 kilogram per meter square. Okay. So, for that you will have to look at the equation CO2 plus H2O gives food plus O2 oxygen. Find out what is the combination between look at that uh, equation and then the burial of one carbon atom releases one oxygen molecule correct CO2 plus H2O gives food plus O2. So, one carbon atom leads to one oxygen molecule. Therefore, 20,000 kilogram per meter square of carbon will release 20,000 kilogram per meter square into 32 divided by 12. That will be 50,000 kilogram per meter square. But from the carbonate, this thing it is 100,000 kilogram per meter square. But here from photosynthesis, only 50,000 kilogram per meter square. So for the 50,000, we have to account for something which is coming from the redox reaction, which is the where some oxygen is coming because of the redox reaction, which is actually because Fe2O3 plus steam steam which is also produced because of the high temperature there is some O in that water and then there is some O in the Fe2O, FeO and all this. So, there is additionally O in that redox reaction which is taking place deep inside the mantle and all of the O cannot be attributed just to the photosynthesis reaction that is the bottom line is that clear ok complete the problem. mass of oxygen eh? what was that in the mass of organic carbon photosynthesis reaction With the burial of each carbon atom, one O2 molecule is released, correct? Hence.
into So, what we learned from the problem 12 and 13 is they are not matching. So, an additional mechanism is required to explain the oxidation of the earth that is to the redox reaction which we already saw. This. If this reaction were not to be there, then we will not be able to reconcile. So, one way of doing I could have re reoriented the whole class as today's class I could have taught like this from the table given work out problem 12 prop and work out problem 13 and see that uh, the inorganic is 100,000 the organic from photosynthesis 50,000 how will you account for the remaining 53,000 kilogram per meter square that 53,000 kilogram per meter square should have come from somewhere it is coming from the earth's crust and mantle because of this reaction this is another way of teaching today's class all right okay end of the story. So, it is the end of the chapter on the earth system we have come we have with the little time available to us I think we got a bird's eye view or a helicopter view of the various subsystems. The next chapter will be atmospheric thermodynamics we will start with some basic definitions and then ideal gas equation, Dalton's law of partial pressures and all that we will start working out problems from tomorrow. Any doubts?